Nope. MTV News came to see how we shoot Machinima. What was that guy's name? Sway. Sway. Do you guys remember the awful conversation that Sway got in with the uh, coffee shop worker? I don't know if you guys remember Sway, but he's like black guy with like dreadlocks. And he had a, the, like like a Rastafari kind of hat. Kinda hat. The white lady who was behind the counter at the coffee shop was trying to make conversation yeah. with him. I, I like your hat. It's very colorful. You people have the nicest hats. Yeah, you're very colorful. I don't mean that like you're a colored person, but you're oh colorful. Oh, my God. I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? And I love the hair. How do you do that? After he got the coffee and was like, our office in Buda was really just an apartment. Mm -hmm. And there were three other apartments there that looked just like ours. So he just went to walk back up to our office, <laughs> then walked in the wrong door into someone's apartment. And he <laughs> said he walked in, and there's this white lady in her kitchen, he said she was fully clothed, but she covered her breasts and her vag and goes, <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, 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 and he walked out. He's like, man, I gotta get out of this town. <laughs> all right, I feel like I should reveal why I don't drink all my Coke. So when I was in college one time, we were at South Padre Island, and so I'm with my buddies and we're drinking, and I'm drinking <clears throat> my cup of beer. And you get pretty drunk, and then I go back to my cup of beer, and I pick it up and drink it. So it wasn't a cup of beer. It was a spit cup. Uh, oh, oh, somebody had been chewing tobacco oh, and spitting in God. it? Yeah. And I hate to tell you this, but I was drunk enough to where I figured this out on the second swallow. Oh, <laughs> so, so, if I were you, when I was drinking after that, I would, like, chain it to my wrist to make sure it never leaves God. my grasp. So now you know, after all these years, why I leave Coke cans around. Yeah, like scarred. The worst part was I realized that I went, oh, no, and I pulled it away. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> You got the saliva string connecting you to the cup. Oh, Somebody oh, else's oh, oh, string. It was like cold spit, so it was like a really oh, tough string. Oh, I had to like bat at it with my free hand. God, that is disgusting. God damn. <laughs> the first purpose of the internet was to deliver this document called the Anarchist Cookbook, which told you how to make smoke bombs and real bombs yep. and napalm. And so... At 13, I very stupidly downloaded this thing, and it told me how to make napalm. One step in this was boiling gasoline, and so I was boiling a pot of gasoline, and my mom came home. She said the whole place smelled like a garage. Came out, she goes, what are you doing? And she was just like crying, like, mortified. Like, what? I don't understand what this is. And I tried to calm her down, explain the science behind it and all this. And my dad was a physicist, so my dad comes home, and my mom's in tears for like the entire day. She's like, what's wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, no, mom, I'm listen, 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 listen. It's gasoline, so you can boil it, and it won't explode until it gets to an open flame. Of course, I'm an idiot because the house was filled with fumes. Any spark in the house would have killed me, you know, because I'm, I'm a kid and I'm stupid. So I said, so there was really not much danger. She goes, what? And my dad goes, technically he is correct. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I bet, I bet he was in trouble after that. He was oh, wow. He should have just grabbed me by the neck and said, punch, punch, punch. <laughs> I remember seeing a video where someone attached an iPhone to, like, a remote control plane, and they needed a way to touch the little button, and so they, like, attached a hot dog to it that would, like, make it take photos. I swear to God. I think I read a story <laughs> about one of those falling in Iran, and then they yeah. got pissed off about it. <laughs> Found a probe and a hot dog. <laughs> All right. All right. An American flag. I just imagine the guys in the room saying, so we're going to get it in the air. How are we going to take the phone to take pictures? The guy, one guy's like eating a hot dog. There was a like, guy, everyone turns <laughs> there was and looks guy at that it, had like, they're a, like, yes. Gus, we tried to break your mind. We had a conspiracy <laughs> of people trying to fuck with you, and you didn't even notice. Yeah. We spent an entire week sending you aims with everything in quotes. Okay, okay, yes. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. I gave his credit. I was going through all of my settings. I was doing Google searches. What the fuck is going on? Was there an update to I am? I think where is this setting? Why is it all in quotes? <laughs> There's another story in here that I read last night that's fucking frightening. This plane in India was flying. The pilot gets up, goes to the bathroom, and while he's gone, the co-pilot decides to adjust his seat. And then when he adjusts his seat, he knocks the control stick so that the plane starts diving. Oh. And uh, the pilot like has to run out of the bathroom and come back and help him pull the jet back out to stabilize oh. it. So they Can you imagine what that must have been like for the pilot? <laughs> you know, the co-pilot's probably always like, oh, "I got it, man. Go take a go take go to the bathroom." And he's like, "I don't know, I don't know." And he's like, "The one time he's like, you know what? <laughs> You've been my co-pilot for like four years now. I'm gonna trust you with the controls." He sits down on the toilet. He starts taking a dump probably constipated and then immediately the plane falls <laughs> Boop. 
And he's like, mother... F- I knew it. He's like, do I have time to squeeze this out before I go save the plane? Or, <laughs> did he bust out with his pants around his ankles? <laughs> when they finally get the plane righted, does the pilot then say, okay, I'm going to go back and finish my shit? Or is he like, I'm going to have to hold this one for a couple hours because there's no way I'm leaving this room or, again. Or he turns to the co-pilot like, you're going to have to pay a standard ticket fare because obviously you have no idea what you're doing up here. Go sit, go sit in coach. <laughs> and not the exit row. I don't trust you. <laughs> Who's going to replace me as co-pilot? Anyone. Literally yeah, they- anyone else on this plane. <laughs> I think there was a goat in the cargo bay that seemed <laughs> kind of sharp. <laughs> cement at a middle school that I went to one time. When I was in middle school, uh, they were doing construction. You know, if you have different courtyards, there's like, you know, there's all oh, the goth kids hang out over there. Uh, there's the jocks over there. There's one courtyard that was like the nerdy courtyard. There were the people with the Pokemon, the, the magic, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And uh, one morning, I get off the bus. My buddy, uh, my buddy and I are walking to class, and all of a sudden, we hear this... And we're like, what the hell was that? And then all of a sudden, we're like, oh, hey, it's raining. And then we realized there was a there was a pipe of liquid cement on the roof. A valve had burst, and it just started spraying liquid cement into the sky, and it started raining down. I saw the saddest thing that day. All these kids were playing their card games. It starts raining cement, and I saw this kid with, like, a bull haircut and, like, thick-ass glasses. My blue eyes! And he dove onto his, onto his rare Yu-Gi-Oh card and sacrificed himself and was covered, absolutely covered in cement. My blue eyes! And he was just completely wiped out. <laughs> After the- <laughs> it was just like a bunch of nerds just frozen in time forever. Yes. And kept the thing yes. <laughs> oh, that morning on the announcements, uh, it was just like, bing. If you have been covered in cement, please report to the nurse's office in a calm manner. If we could please get some people to chisel the children out of the courtyard, that would be uh, fantastic. That Thank is you. fucking phenomenal. <laughs> So one of the things that happened, we're in Sydney, our first stop, I left my phone in a cab. It was a big pain in the ass. And the entire time, Gavin's like, I can't believe you left your phone in the cab. <laughs> Even after we got it all settled, he's like, you left your phone in a cab, you're an idiot. You're the most unorganized person I know. What did I tell you? People hand me shit, don't <laughs> hand me stuff. People are handing me t-shirts and cups that I gotta carry away. It's like... Fuck! And so then I lost my cab because I was keeping track of some goddamn t-shirt that somebody gave me. Thanks for the t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> so, Gavin the entire time is just ridiculing me for leaving stuff behind. And we get back to Austin, and we're out in front, and we get out of the cab, and we're doing everything. Goddamn, if I don't look in the cab to make sure I'm not leaving anything behind, there's Gavin's cell phone sitting in the backseat of the cab. I was so prepared to let that, that phone just drive away and go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> He was just looking at me with, like, tr- obviously trying to hold in the biggest grin in the world. He was just looking at me, and he was just like, ah. I had a pretty good tell going on. I was, like, shaking while I was, like, trying not to laugh and smile. I had, I had probably the creepiest convention experience ever. It, it finally happened. Someone followed me into the bathroom to get something signed. Really? It was Mike from Maine. I was sitting there at the urinal. Or not sitting. I was standing at the urinal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I could tell there was someone behind me, so I kind of look over my shoulder, and there's someone there with uh, one of their Halo 4 posters and a yeah. Sharpie. Yeah. He's like, hey, can I get you to sign this, Gus? I was like, oh, my hands are I'm kind of doing something at the moment. <laughs> he was like, oh, well, I, you know, I yeah. wanted to make sure I caught you. I said, you know there's only one exit to this yeah. bathroom. Yeah. You could have waited on the other side of the exit, and you would have caught me anyway. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but I really want to get you to sign this. I was like, okay. So I, yeah. so I come over, and I, I intentionally, without washing my hands, start going over to try to <laughs> sign it. He's like, no, 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 wash your hands. I was like, no, you asshole. You came in the bathroom. <laughs> If you're waiting outside the door, you get washed hands. Inside the bathroom, you get dirty hands. Uh, so then I signed this thing, and I walked out, and there was a family there waiting for me. And they're like, oh, can you sign this for me, Gus? I was like, oh, thank you. How courteous of you to wait for me outside the fucking bathroom. <laughs> it would have been funny if an entire family followed you into the bathroom. <laughs> The first day that we were in VidCon, at 3 a.m., I get a phone call that wakes me up, and it's Gavin saying, Gavin, which meant come out. <laughs> Come out and take care of me. <laughs> this motherfucker, he oh, was no. so drunk. It was unbelievable. I'm in his hotel room, and I'm just sitting there trying to coax him to bed. Uh-huh. And I'm like, go to bed. I just keep repeating to him, go to bed, go to bed. He's constantly trying to tackle me, constantly trying to knock the phone out of my hands. And I'm like, Gavin, go to sleep. He gets a $6 bottle of water, uncaps it, and then just starts splashing it on me. Like, just <laughs> just douses on me with water. All and just, the water goes in the first douse. I'm just like flailing an empty bottle out. I finally got him into the goddamn bed, and I go, all right, I'm leaving. I leave, I go down the hallway. Sure enough, I hear, bop, 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 as I get in the elevator. <laughs> Gavin's in the elevator now, and I'm like, son of a bitch. I got, we got down to the lobby, and I was like, you know, I'm just done. So what I did was, he went to follow me out of the elevator in the lobby. I put my hand in the middle of his chest, held him in the elevator. I hit all the buttons, <laughs> then he tried to get out, and then I kicked him in the stomach and knocked him back down into the elevator. 
And I pointed at the buttons and I said, somebody on one of these floors will take care of you. And that's it. And I let the door shut and I went home. I had, a, I had a miserable flight up to Toronto. Uh-huh. I'm sitting. I got my favorite seat. The exit row, window seat, happy as can be. And I see this young black couple coming down the aisle. And the girl ends up sitting next to me in the middle. And the dude sits like a row in front of us, but over on the other side of the plane. So I recognize okay. here's here's this couple. They got separated. It's miserable. Sometimes I travel with someone and I want to sit with them. So I said to the guy, I go, hey, I go, hey, do you, I go, hey, man, do you want my seat so that you two can sit next together? I go, do you want my seat? And he looks at me. I go, do you want my seat? I'll give you my seat and I'll take yours. They didn't know each other. Well, I, assumed oh two, I assumed the two oh black people no. were a couple. Oh, my God. Did he look at you like you were a lunatic? He's like, he's like oh, we're not together. And I'm like, uh, I go, uh, okay. I was so embarrassed. And I had to sit next to the girl the rest of the oh goddamn Oh, my flight. God. I, I'm surprised you didn't I, I, kick the door and push you out. Oh my what we have now must be the perfect level of well-knownness. The pharmacist at the pharmacy I go to <laughs> oh! knows who I am. Oh, no! So, like, like I have to get some, like, some fucked up medicine. I'm like, I can't go to my pharmacy because the guy knows me. <laughs> hey, got your uh, butt herpes cream. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go to pick up my medicine, he's like, hey, uh, so I saw that short. You were really funny. Like, oh, no! Right, so can I just get my pills, please? Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> Like you kick off work in next year's RTX, right? Like, immediately. Yeah, luckily we built that robot. Gus bought 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> Program for fun. <laughs> oh, Comedy man. routine broken. Kill, kill, <laughs> kill. Speaking of the pharmacy. So okay. yesterday I went to the HEB and I walk in. Fucking Billy is sitting there. The oh, one-legged homeless guy. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. owns this his other fucking leg still? <laughs> he still has it? He still has that leg. Oh. And I was like... Oh my god! And he like he like looked at me, started trying to talk to me again, and I said nope, and I turned around and left and walked right back out. And he made Gavin mad for the first time. He was mad at me. How? I kicked him in the butthole. What did you do to make him mad? <laughs> I took it up a notch. Uh, so we were doing a signing in Australia, and we need to go to the bathroom. And in Australia, the urinal is you stand on like a platform and you pee against a metal sheet that's on the wall. Gavin went to the end and I went into one of the stalls. I came out of the stall. Gavin's still going. So I <laughs> walked up and kicked him in the butt. <laughs> and the way Gavin describes it, here's the metal sheet. Yeah. And my knob touched it. <laughs> and he described it as like a soft gong noise. <laughs> and he, he was Oh my god! He was so mad. And Gavin Mad is like, you can see the wheel turning in his head, the one gear that he has. When we got back to the booth, you know, we always have hand sanitizer on, so I said, just go scrub oh, it. In. <laughs> and uh, I think he did it, and that didn't make him any happier after he did that. That's fucking disgusting. I'm going to tell a drunk story from Yay. New York. I think I was at a bar with Bernie, Jeff, and Kathleen. And we, we stayed till like 4 a.m. We walk out of the bar, and there was a dude who had been drinking in the bar who was wearing, like, the camo jacket and camo pants. And the dude's kind of, like, bobbing and weaving on the corner, like, not able to stand up straight. And then all of a sudden, he loses his balance and falls face forward into a bumper of a car that's parked <laughs> on the street. And he's just, like, passed out in the gutter. And just when I lost him, we just fucking started laughing. Like, we're like, oh, my God, the guy fucking hit the bumper and he fell in the gutter. <laughs> So then Bernie and Kathleen decided they wanted to be good Samaritans. So they're like, oh, are you okay? They're like in the gutter with him. <laughs> he kind of like stirs. He's like, whoa, whoa. And they're like, we're going to put you in a cab. He's like trying to weave down cabs. One cab kind of slows down and looks at the guy. He goes, where are you going? The guy goes, do you know how to get to Queens? And the cab just takes off. <laughs> and then Kathleen's like, here, let me do this. So she steps out into the street and she just like puts her arm out. And I'm not kidding. A fucking limousine pulls over. Looks at her and goes, where are you going? She goes, take him to Queens. <laughs> the guy looks at the guy and goes, okay, throw him in the back. <laughs> so the Jeff and I lost it again. We're like, this guy's in a fucking limo now. What next? Is the helicopter going to come and fucking pick up the limousine? I wondered, did the next morning, did the dude like come to and it's like, was I in a limo? <laughs> like, I wonder if he even made it home. Like, maybe his organs got harvested for all we know. So I went swimming. <laughs> with Mike and Lindsay at their apartment. We were, we'd been in there for hours. We all get out, Lindsay walks back like two minutes in front of us and I'm walking back with Michael. The two minute head start that Lindsay had, she'd gone into the house, locked the door and passed out. Michael was <laughs> wailing on the door. He was going, 
just thought, lazy. She just would not wake up. And, he, and then at some point, he walked down the side of the apartment to try and find the piece of wall that was closest to the bedroom. He was, like, smacking on that. He said some lady came outside and was like, excuse me, can you stop trying to destroy the walls? And he was like, I'm trying to get in my own apartment. Michael eventually, after, like, bouncing off the door a couple of times, you called the locksmith. Kara showed up to pick up Gavin, and then the locksmith pulls up behind her, and he's just, like, doing his thing, trying to pick the lock, and Kara's like... She asked him his name and says his name was Davis, but she's like, come on, Davis, you can do it. I'm like, Kara, shut up, right? Like, I'm sure the guy can do it. Then Kara started actually cheering. She's like, give me a D. And then at give some point, well, she, she starts wailing on the door as well. Yeah. While he's, while he's it. picking it. While he's trying and to pick it, she goes, was, my voice is higher pitch, so she'll probably but hear me we've already got the locksmith there. We don't need you to yell anymore. And Lindsay <laughs> did not hear any of it, right? No. I fucking in walk in, she's like, oh, no, what happened? What's going like, on? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not just fucking hanging out outside. Don't mind me. Yeah, At least you made it in. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bye, Michael. <laughs> I have something I'm really embarrassed to admit about television. And that is for too long. I thought that when you turned off TV, it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and for years, I was so mad at my brother because I was like, when did you turn on the TV? He's like, what are you talking about? I said, it was, you know, whatever was on TV, you know, Super Friends. And I shut it off. I know because Superman was talking to Wonder Woman. And mom had me go do something. And I shut it off. So you must have turned the TV off. I guess, You're a fucking fool. <laughs> Hey, it just feels like it's illegal to throw out a box of porn this big. <laughs> there was one time when I, I didn't realize that I was having panic attacks. So I went to the hospital and they gave me a potassium pill. And I said, potassium, how can I eat a bunch of bananas? She goes, no, it's a little bit more than just eating a banana. You know, it's good to be careful with potassium. I said, why is that? She says, because if you take too much, it can stop your heart. <laughs> As if that's not bad enough. Then nice. I, I had just swallowed the thing and I go, well, how do you know how much is too much? She goes, oh, no, it's regulated doses. She goes, but, she goes, that's the kind of thing like potassium, the thing you just took. Whenever you hear about a nurse killing a patient, that's what they give them. And she fucking walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, as soon as she turned around, she got that fucking hugest grin. That's probably the best part of her job. <laughs> I had that so once, bad. and I'd never had a migraine. I thought I was having a brain hemorrhage and was about to die, because I was just <laughs> typing. In the middle of a sentence, I forgot how to read and write. And I was just like... And I was trying to read what I'd just written. I couldn't focus. I was just seeing letters, and they weren't... You had a stroke! But I was just like, I could see all the letters, but I just couldn't m make them into the sounds of words. And then I couldn't remember, the, like, the name of the slow-mo guys. I couldn't remember it. And I was trying to read it. I was like, I don't know how to say this. And then I tried to test myself spelling something. So I, for some reason, I thought of the word chum. So I tried to type the word chum, and I ended up just passing out. And then when I woke up, I'd written the word jums. And that's why... <laughs> you had a stroke. <laughs> it sounds like a stroke to me. I had a similar thing where I lost my vision. I just went from stood up to on the back of my head. Yeah. My vision just blurred into one big colour. And apparently then I sat down in a puddle and just was look, like, looking around. <laughs> and basically I went blind for three days. Because all the vision is on the back of the brain, so I just bruised it. Apparently. Jesus and, um, Christ. Shit. That's fucked up. And um, I remember being in bed thinking... I'm going to throw up so bad because I was concussed. I remember crawling <laughs> on my hands and knees because I, I knew where my toilet was. So I crawled into the toilet, threw up and crawled back. And my dad came in. He was like, you just threw up on the top of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I got to say, what a caring father. You're going to clean that up, Gavin. <laughs> Did he like uh, tape a sponge to one hand and like, clean it to the other and make you go crawl back over there and clean that up? <laughs> kite flying with my kids in Zilker. One of my kids had his kite, and it was way the hell up there. I was so happy, and he had this... <laughs> and just so he, he wouldn't let go of it, I had this big spool. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, Teddy, my seven-year-old, who's a jackass, he lets it go, and he's like, I let it go. <laughs> and so the spool, I'm watching the kite get away, and I'm watching the spool like bounce across the ground. I chased that thing... <laughs> Full tilt sprint all the way across Zilker, and the nice. way I got it is some guy was sitting there playing with his kids, and the spool goes by him, and it wraps around his neck. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, Holy crap! It wraps around his neck, and then the guy is still getting blown to the yank. He was like, <laughs> 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 If I hadn't been chasing it, it might have killed the guy. Would that be oh my god! One of the things that you have to apologize for, but yeah. sorry, I almost hung you in front of your kids. <laughs> Awesome. Something happened in the office the other day we didn't talk about. So Gavin likes making stupid bets. Yep. And he had like a bottle of barbecue sauce. He told Michael, I'll give you $500 if you can drink this entire bottle of barbecue sauce. 
Michael said, done. <laughs> Let's do this. He was so confident that Gavin was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Um, if you, uh, I'll give you five hundred dollars if you can drink it. But if you can't drink it all, you have to pay me a hundred dollars. So Michael's like, okay. So we went to the kitchen, and Michael sat there, and this is exactly how it went. Michael went to start. They go three, two, one. He goes, "You're fucked." <laughs> and he jumped around the thing. You were asking me one day, who do you think is the best looking guy in the office? I have no idea. I'm the worst judge. I don't know if someone's ugly or not. Wait, 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 Gavin. When I pack east. You got fairly drunk, and you were like, Oh, let's go with this story. Okay. <laughs> we are at the party, the Jeff Williams party. I was dancing, doing my thing. You, Gavin looks concerned. You, you <laughs> come up to me, to describe that look fairly drunk, face. and you're like, Monty, I'm not attracted to dudes, but if I had a boner for you, it's really trying right now. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. You, you gestured your finger like it was like twitching, like right. trying to trying to bonify itself, but not not functioning. <sighs> Like, I will sleep anywhere. It doesn't matter. I've also seen Bernie fall asleep while eating a package of gummy bears. It was me, Joel, and Bernie had to sleep in the same room. We were in Seattle, and Joel was like, we got to get back get, get back to the hotel. I'm like, what's the hurry? He's like, I got I to gotta fall asleep before Bernie does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I just got to get back there. I got to get back there, get back there. Get back there right now. <laughs> we got to the hotel, and it's like all three of us at the same time. Bernie starts, you know, going through the mini bar. Finally, we're going to get this huge package of gummy bears. And so everybody's going to sleep. I can hear Joel sighing from the bed. Like, <laughs> oh, like he's so angry that, that he knows he's not going to get to sleep. And Bernie's going to be snoring and keep him up. And he's just, mm, mm, over there like that. And, and then Bernie is eating gummy bears. You can hear the crinkling of the package. It's just like crinkling, 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 crinkling. It goes straight from crinkling to snoring without missing a beat. It's like, I don't know. How you did it. And so basically, I was, I think I was up the latest because I was just laughing at, <laughs> at the snoring. And then it would be, a, and then you'd hear Joel go. <laughs> when we were in New York this past time, the first night we were there, we went out and we went drinking. And I got fucking drunk. I got so drunk I started arm wrestling people. <laughs> I never arm wrestle. Look at me. I'm the fucking weakest like, dude in the I'm world. Like should- Th- those two arm wrestled first. And I think Michael won. Then you wrestled Barbara. <laughs> Honestly, I thought she might beat you. You just like crushed her. I was calling bullshit because Chris and I, it was close. So I was like, my arms are tired. That's not fair. And Gus is like, fucking baby. Wah. So then I was like, oh, fine. And then Gus and I arm wrestled and I ended up winning. And he's like, I have no dick. <laughs> <laughs> You had people come up to you in the booth. They're like, yell at me. Yell at the camera. First of all, it was like a French dude. Like, he was totally French. He had, like, a huge scarf on. He's like, my son is a huge fan. He's such a big fan. Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's what they say. <laughs> they call it Le Rage Quit. Yeah. So I was like, it's kind of fucking weird. I'm like, all right. And the guy's like, my son, he was wondering if you could yell for him in the video. And I was like, are you serious? And the kid's standing there. He's like, oh, go ahead. And I was like... All right, so I just started screaming, and I was like, I was trying to scream and not curse, and then he's like, yeah, more, and I'm like, I'm like, I have fucking bullshit, and he's like, yes, father of the year. Bernie and I were in the Netherlands last week, and we ate a lot of really weird, terrible food. We ate raw meat. The that worst kind of weird. thing you can eat raw. In Europe, too. That's mad cow territory. It's called Oswurst. It's a Amsterdam specialty. No, but I swear, there was like some other, like, Dieter was in the back there betting Hans that he couldn't get us to eat raw meat for five euros because he gave us yeah. free we didn't ask he tells us it, it was a special dutch dish it was raw ground beef with spices spices by the way is pepper and i even asked him because i was suspicious i go what's this called and he goes it's called us worst <laughs> you know, totally made up that's, to- that's totally his last name he was like oh shit <laughs> dieter Ostwurst was like, his name. <laughs> I played a game of Saints Row. Man, that was the most thuggish group of people that I have ever run across. Like, there was one guy, we joined the game, and at the start of the game, our teammates would just kill me and stomp on us. And I'd go, guys, can we just play the game? He goes, hey, shut up. Take your lumps. It was, like, <laughs> it was literally like we were being jumped into the community. Oh, man, but now you're in. I am. I'm part of the game. Yeah, you're life. Set. The hard part is now getting out. Yeah. You quit the game and they message you going, no. <laughs> I haven't been sick for years. I always find that it's, it's mental. Because sometimes if you feel like you're getting sick and then you give in and you become sick. But the last few times I've had that feeling, I've just been like, I'm not doing it, and I'll skip it. You would make the world's shittiest doctor. Because that'd be your free <laughs> advice, like, oh, you're getting sick? Yeah, just don't do that. Just, yeah. <laughs> I imagine someone coming to you, and they say, doctor free, I have cancer. And you go, oh, I got that. Stop. <laughs> just give it up. 
Kara was over at Jeff's house one night. So he has these Peggle nights where people just come over and they take turns playing Peggle. So Jeff beat one level of Peggle and Gavin got so excited. He was like, yes! Like he ran over to Jeff and jumped into his arms and like wrapped himself around Jeff. And Jeff went like this and put his hands in the air. And Gavin slid down him <laughs> and just ripped his pants right down. And he looks up and realizes his boxers were down too. <laughs> and Jeff's dong is just hanging out. And Kara was there and she's like... <laughs> and Jeff was like so, so now, now anytime Kara is giving a tour of our office I have to make it a point to go hey guys make sure Kara tells you about the time she saw Jeff's penis <laughs> <laughs> We went to E3 one year, we rented a van, and it was the first time that Jeff and <laughs> Gus met Matt. I'll so I pointed out that, hey, we're in Los Angeles, we're only five hours away from Vegas. Gus goes, I'm not going to Vegas. I go, what do you mean you're not going to Vegas? And he gets so fucking infuriated. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? Why are you so mad about Vegas? He goes, I'm not going to Vegas. Don't talk about Vegas. <laughs> so we're in the Del Taco parking lot in like downtown LA, like right on Trends Vestite Alley. I say, guys, look. I'm gonna say one last time, we can just get the, we get Del Taco and we drive straight to Vegas. So Gus says, I swear to God, if you say <laughs> Vegas one more time, I'm getting out of this van. I go, okay, fine, I give up. I will not mention Vegas for us tonight. I apologize. In my mind, I was like, he's testing me. <laughs> I, was like, I just said I would leave the van, and he just <laughs> I was like, I was like, if I don't leave, he knows I'm a pussy. So I have to leave. Oh, no. I remember I opened the van door. <laughs> I just walked out <laughs> into the night and Matt was like who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> it was my first time ever in LA. I walked a block down the street, realized my mistake. This, this was a sketchy ass part of LA. It was pretty fuck. seedy. So I got a cab, I took a cab back to our hotel, I packed all my shit, and I was like, I'm flying back to Austin tonight. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this, I'm going home. No. And that's a note on the bed. Are you serious? <laughs> I wrote, see you in Austin, asshole. <laughs> asshole. Scripture and season, and they're fucking awesome right now. I've been eating grapes Do you know like, a, like, a does like a nice grape. Like people like grape. People <laughs> like grapes. I want to see that as a shirt. I want a picture of Gavin's face. And just, people like grapes. <laughs> the best part is, he would put that shirt on. You'd walk down the street. Someone would walk up to him and go, "Yeah, everybody likes grapes." It's your cunt. <laughs> yeah. Well, the internet. That's phone's ringing. Right, phone. Uh, actually, I actually take this call. Uh, hello, this is Bernie. <laughs> Good, how are you doing? He's, uh, he's like leaning away from us, he's, he's taking the phone that, down. That, he's, he's unzipping his pants. He Why is he licking his nipples? I, I, are those boxers know. or briefs? I can't tell. No, get rid of that. We have way better Nazi flags than that one. Why? Wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'd be interested to know, like, which company has the most storage in the world. It's gotta be Google, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. Tupperware. You'd be surprised, like... <laughs> Tupperware? <laughs> Stupid. The, the, the co-location facility where we have our servers. Uh, I went... <laughs> Wasn't that funny? That <laughs> was funny to me, man. We were at the Halo party last night. So we went to the Microsoft store up north of Austin. I think my favorite part of the night, though, was the very end. So we had been hanging out. There was pizza. There was the game. We were signing, signing for fans. Talking with Ray, and he, he has to go to the bathroom at some point. He leaves. So while he's in the bathroom, uh, some lady comes up to us and is like, okay, we're about to have a photo op, but we want only people that worked on the game in here. So if everybody could go ahead and just please get out. So we're all outside. It was like really cold. It was really sad. It was like watching inside like a happy family around Christmas dinner yeah. or something. And we were just out in the cold. <laughs> we're outside. We're just talking. We're like, hey, where's Ray? And that's when we see Ray just like strolling out of the bathroom, happy as can be. And then he just stops like deer in headlights. Because everyone's everybody is, Yeah, everybody's grouped together about to take a picture. And he just freezes like, what? Where did everybody go? <laughs> What's going on? And he did like a like he stopped and went, uh, and he looked back to the bathroom like, should I go back to the... <laughs> and then finally, with his infinite wisdom, he just decided... I'm gonna be in this picture. <laughs> and he just went in and he just started getting buddy buddy with everybody. He was like, hey, what's up? Yeah, Halo 4, right? We're awesome. And they took the picture, and I like to think years down the road, someone's gonna be like, and these were my coworkers. I don't remember this <laughs> lad, this asshole. My so it's a huge game, and we all get fucking hammered at the game. Yeah. So the first year I ever went there, when I was a freshman, I was 17. But my buddy, John Cross, I call my buddy, I fucking hate him. He gets the idea. He goes, hey, Bernie, it's five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Let's run out the field. I'm so drunk by this point, I'm like, let's do this. So we go down. There's a railing and then a drop-off. There's all these people. We're all crowding in. We're all about to jump. John's right there, and he's like, we're all going to go. It's going to be a big rush. Now it's like two minutes left in the game. So he goes, go. So we jump. I get all the way out to midfield. I turn around. Nobody else. Oh, oh my God. God. Damn, I'm out. I'm out on the fucking <laughs> center of the field with the football players by myself. <laughs> and then I look up, and I say, oh, look, the band's coming out in the field. 
It's not the band, it's security guards. And I'm so fucking drunk, I sit, think to myself, if I get to the end zone, they can't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk to get away from them. I was running. Cat was the crowd show. <laughs> Bernie. Wow. Bernie. Miles, Bernie. One of the greatest <laughs> moments of my life, when I broke the goal line, everyone went, yeah! <laughs> And God. then I saw the tunnel, and I thought, I just gotta make it to that tunnel. I'm running, and from behind the goalpost, steps out this short Mexican woman security guard. She takes both her fists, and she goes, boom, right in the middle of my chest. <laughs> land on my ass. And let me tell you, when security guards grab you, they are not nice. One guy grabs me with a collar and yanks me, and he goes, kid, how old are you? And I said, I'm only 17. He goes, go back to your seat, get you out of here. <laughs> I would have been in Guantanamo today yes, if that yes, had happened. Really. Yeah. Speaking of nudity. Michael, having you here tonight reminded me of the last time we actually hung out for an ex extended period of time. I don't like where this is Which going. was at a strip club. I don't like strip clubs. It's just, I don't know, I, it makes me really uncomfortable. So, Brandon picked up on that real quick, and I was having a conversation with you. I'm sitting at the table, all the chairs had wheels, and all of a sudden, the, like, the table's uh, getting by the way, like, oh, oh, where am I going? And I see, like, Brandon's just in tears laughing, Chris yeah. is snickering, I'm like, oh, no, they didn't. And I turn around, and I see the stripper. Now, everybody at home, I want you to imagine a stripper with the name Dark Chocolate. Imagine a stripper named Dark Chocolate. Make or three times as big. That was this stripper. Whenever I'm in an awkward situation, I just laugh. That's right. how I deal with nervously. Nervous so she leans forward and she says the words, I'm going to smother you in my titties. <laughs> and I just, I burst out my titties. <laughs> and the next thing I know is, I'm suffocating in her titties. And I'm laughing my ass off. And it's she stops fist. mid her thing and rears back and she looks at me and she goes, are you retarded or something? <laughs> <laughs> I go, no, I'm just really having a hard time. And just continue to laugh. This is always something that's amazed me. See a carrot. A carrot grows in the ground. And then it gets picked by somebody that you'll never meet. Throws it in the back of a cart. It travels in open air to the plant. They wash it off. They put it in a package. They send it to the store. Somebody else unloads it in a loading dock. And then they put it out where everyone else in the supermarket comes by and touches it. And then you take it home. You rinse it off. And then you drop it. And you're like, oh, now it's ruined. <laughs> no fucking sense. <laughs> Yeah, well, you have that weird thing where, like, your bodily fluids are acidic. Yeah. It's, it's like the world's worst superpower. I can slowly, <laughs> over the course of three years, dissolve half a centimeter of metal. You, you can escape from it. jail. Just grab the bar. <laughs> in like, 20 snuffle. years, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> the guards walk by, they go, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nope. People in Texas are fucking nice. And even more, like, genuine nice. But I'm just not used to it. I'm like... Why are you so fucking nice to me? Yeah, it's, it's what, suspicious. You want my blood? New Jersey, it's like, what do you want? Here's what I want. All right, here's your change. Get out. All right, yeah. fuck you. And then you walk out. Well, I can like, tell you a place that. where that you probably hate worse than any place. I go to Mighty Fine Hamburgers. And they go, hey, sir, how's your day? I go, good, how's yours? And they go, mighty fine. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. I want to now get a job somewhere where that's completely irrelevant, like Jersey Mike's. I'll be like, how's your day? And they'll be like, good, how's yours? And I'll be like, Jersey Mike's. <laughs> you won't make any sense. <laughs> I was at a I was at a party um, with I will call him Don. We got hammered. We're having a good time. I'm out in the backyard talking with a few of my friends. This girl comes out. She says, "Guys, guys, the police are here." And I froze because I'd never been to a party that had been busted by the cops before. So my first thought was like, "Don, we gotta get the fuck out of here," because I'm really drunk. And my buddy's like, "That sounds like a great idea, Miles. What are we gonna do?" So I'm like, "Guys, over the fence. Let's go." Me and Don were the only people to go. All my other sober friends were like. Bye. These two other freshmen that had gone to the party who just like were completely panicked were like, these guys seem to know their shit. So they followed us. So we jumped into the neighbor's backyard. We can see all like the blue and red lights on the other side of the fence. And we're fucking terrified. Like, Don, go over the fence. See how many there are. He's like, oh, yeah, I got it. So he goes over the fence and he puts his hands up and he pulls himself just right over the edge. And then <laughs> the whole thing snaps and the fence falls forward. And I just go, run! <laughs> so we just start sprinting. And fortunately, the neighbor's backyard was connected to like all these woods and shit. So we're just sprinting through the woods. And we went down into this riverbed that was like dried up. I was helping the kid down. He goes, hey, man, I, I just want to say thanks, man. I'm just like, I have scholarships. I can't get arrested, man. And I shit you not. I go, what's your name, dude? And he goes, Johnny. I go, Johnny. I'm gonna get you out of here. <laughs> I patted him on the back. And this kid was probably like, thanks, dude. But in my mind, I was like, it's gonna be okay. And like triumphant horns were playing and shit. And we got all out of there. We made it to some like playground in the middle of butt fuck nowhere and parted ways. We start calling our friends like, hey, hey man, are you okay? Are you all right? And my friend's like, what? Is everything okay? I know the cops come. Hold on one second. I'm at the party. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it was just a noise complaint. It's totally fine. <laughs> Does Kara listen to the podcast? <laughs> probably. She's probably listening to us right now. She probably She's outside the door. the door. All right, well, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I happen to have a doorbell button 
on the bottom of my desk. And any time someone goes up there and gets a little too chatty, uh, there just happens to be someone at the door. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an asshole. I've been trying to figure that out for a while. See, like, I've been recruited and trying to figure this out. See, <laughs> Carrie told me about this, but I totally forgot about it. I hear the doorbell ring, and Kara goes to the door, and there's nobody there. And then you came out of your office, and you're like, you like opened the door and looked outside, and she's like, who is it? There's somebody hiding? And you're like, no, nobody's there. What the fuck? And she's like, somebody's playing tricks on me. I think this building's haunted. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I forgot they had that doorbell button upstairs. You can always tell when you're close to having it happen. Like, I remember she's, like, watching the video, and then all of a sudden she'll just say, like, I think it was about, like, Marshall's desk and cleanly. And then you just see Marshall's face, like, change. It's like the decision has been made, and his arm slowly starts to move on the wall. Hey, weren't you in a car crash, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, I guess we should that. talk about that, yeah. I have a very nice friend who wanted to buy a Vespa. She knows I have a motorcycle license, so she asked if I would be kind enough to drive it back to her house for her. So I complied, and I was driving to Lamar, uh, going about 40 miles an hour, and I had to make a left turn, and I couldn't figure out the turn ratio, and so I ran straight into a curb. I did a flip in the air. I landed on my neck, bounced over a sidewalk, and then landed on the other side of the grass. <laughs> The guy who, who stopped and called the paramedics, uh, the guy said it looked awesome. <laughs> and I felt so bad about wrecking this Vespa that this girl has only owned for about 10 minutes. Did she see you uh, wreck it? No, we got separated driving, and so uh. they had to come back, and they just saw the bike in pieces. <laughs> Anyway, so then the paramedics come. The paramedics turned out to be two super hot chicks, and they laughed and laughed and laughed at me. And that was emasculating. And then three cops showed up, and then they were laughing and laughing and laughing and how, asking how I could possibly crash a scooter. <laughs> you know? It was all very, very embarrassing. Junior year of college, I had uh, recently broken up with a, a pretty long-term girlfriend. She invited me to her 21st birthday, and I was like, you know, trying to be nice, like, sure, yeah, I'll go. I didn't want to go. It was at her new boyfriend's house. So I go to the party with a few friends. I have a miserable time. Her best friend made a homemade cake for her. It was a really beautiful cake. You know, she was all happy, and I'm in the back drinking lots and being you know, curmudgeon about the whole thing. I finally found a time where I felt like, okay, I've been here for an appropriate amount of time. I can leave. Okay, let's go. My friend Adam and I had to drive a bunch of our drunk friends home. The last guy that we had to get home was my old roommate, Shay. I tell him, hey dude, we're gonna go ahead and drive you home now. Come on in the car. He goes, okay, hold on, I have to run to the bathroom and I gotta grab something, I'll be right back. I'm like, okay. I get in the car, I'm really bitter, I'm really angry. Shay comes sprinting out of the house. He dives in the car, he goes, go, we gotta go, we gotta go. We take it off, dude, what's going on? He stole the cake. I'm like, why did you do that? It was a good cake. <laughs> My miserable night has done a complete 180. So we're laughing. We're having a great time. We're driving home. Near the UT campus is a place called Ken's Donuts. Yes. It is a 24-hour donut so shop. So good. We mentioned Ken's Donuts, and all of a sudden, like, passed out. Trey goes, <gasps> we need to go to Ken's Donuts. Well, why is that? Well, I can buy donuts with this cake. Shay, that is a half-eaten cake. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How many donuts do you think we could get with that cake? He stops and seriously stares for, like, a good 30 seconds. If I were to guess, I would say approximately six dozen. Adam's like, all right, so we're going to Ken's Donuts. We pull in. The guy there's like, hey, welcome to Ken's Donuts. How you doing? He slams down the table. So let's make this happen. The guy's like, I'm, let's make what happen? You know what. I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes, listen, I have sweets. You sell sweets. I think we know what's going on here. The guy's seriously like, I still just don't know. He slams the table. Are you going to buy my cake or aren't you? Give me donuts. At that point, the guy started to get annoyed and go for the phone. So we had to drag him out of there. And for the rest of the night, he was just sulking. Just, it could have been, man. Six dozen. But he completely made my night. I got on a flight with Matt. We went through security. <laughs> he got his bag pulled. And they went to go through it. And I stood there for a minute. And the lady's like, do you have anything you need to tell me about in your bag? And he's like, no. And then the lady pulled out a knife. Like a pocket knife. And Matt goes, oh, that's weird. I guess I left that in my bag. I didn't even realize I had it. And she's like, no problem. Made him go through again, flagged his bag again, had a second knife in his bag. I'm surprised he's not in jail, but he should be. I mean, yeah. the dude tried to go through with two knives. Then he immediately got like a large coffee and spilt it all over the ground. <laughs> he, was having, <laughs> he was having the worst morning ever. You guys fly a lot. Do you ever get nervous? The only I, I... time I ever came close to getting nervous... Gus and I were flying back from South Carolina, and I looked out at the wing, and there was, like, black ooze dripping out of the wing. There was also duct tape yeah. right there on the wing. We just laughed <laughs> it off, but I was pretty sure we were going to die. 
One time you and I were flying somewhere to an event, and it was two weeks after a pilot got busted flying drunk, we were, and Gus and I were the last people to get off the plane. As we're getting off the plane, the, the pilot door opens up, and the pilot like kind of saunters out to say something to the uh, flight attendant, and he had a huge cocktail in his hand, and he looks at us, and we see him, and he froze like a deer in the headlights, and he looked at <laughs> he his cocktail, at his drink. and he looked at us, and looked back at his cocktail, and we just started laughing and walked out, and he, to my knowledge, he's still standing there. <laughs> that was awesome. There, I read an article recently about a private company is looking for people who want to go to Mars oh, yeah, and not that. come back. I would do it. Like you would say, not. With or without you your wife. You say stuff like this all the time. My retirement plan is a shotgun. <laughs> you will never shoot yourself with a shotgun. You will never go to Mars and not come back. I, I will bet do it you... just to spite you. <laughs> I will go to Mars out of spite, motherfucker. I bet you <laughs> and the whole time I'll just be like... Yeah, 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 <laughs> Gavin's just... back on Earth like, oh, I can't believe yeah. you went. Just before your phone leaves the service area of Earth, there's just a picture of you at Earth like this. <laughs> By the time you land, we'll have telescopes powerful enough. We'll see you. We're just on Mars like this. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be alone. I assume they'd send a group of people. Yeah, so would that help you? You want to go with a group no, of people? <laughs> I need to keep my routine out. I gotta ignore people. I gotta <laughs> find <laughs> reasons to hide. I even him in the spacecraft, like making tape lines down the middle of the room. It's like, nope, this is mine. This is mine. <laughs> so, would you go if there was no internet? No internet. I mean, I assume there's gonna be no internet. What do they have? Mars internet. You get a Mars that is male mind people. Yeah, they get like 10 Instagram alerts. All day long, they were just red dirt. <laughs> I know! So we actually wear headphones when we record the podcast so that we can hear ourselves through our headphones. Looking at you, I always get super frustrated. How is it you always manage to put your headphones on backwards? Do you, like, we'll do you intentionally put them on backwards? <laughs> they look the same. It's no, they don't. don't. New message from Kevin Free. You are a punk cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, that was rude. If you urinate in public, you'll get your put on the uh, registered sex offender really? list. Really? Where's the weirdest place you've peed? A parking garage of a grocery store in Seattle. I went to this grocery store. I got there. I was like, oh, man, I got to piss. I got to piss. I got to piss. So I go to the restrooms there, and they've got like a close for maintenance sign over it, and they're locked. And there's a sign that's like, go to the subway next door. So I go to the subway next door, but they're closed. Like, oh, crap. So then I go down by where we're parked uh, in the parking garage, and I just start pissing. And, like, as I'm getting close to being done, a security guard walks up behind me. Oh. And he's like, what are you doing? And in my head, I'm like, oh, shit, registered sex offender list. <laughs> so I just take off running. <laughs> <laughs> then, like, I ran around the block a couple times, and then when I was convinced I got away from him, I went back into the, <laughs> the supermarket. I was like, guys, we got to get out of here. <laughs> You know how you like you go to a, a place enough and you start to recognize the employees? Well, there was this one dude who I would see all the time at Home Depot. So I went up to him and I said, hey, you work here, right? And the guy goes, no, I don't work here. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, I'm pretty sure I don't work here. Why would you think I work here? And I was like, oh, I see you here all the time. And the guy goes, why would you be seeing me? What do you? Why, why would you remember me? And I was like, I really don't know. I'm sorry. I just – I thought you – Every time I come into Home Depot, wow. you're here. And he's like, how did you notice that? And I'm like, I, I just thought you were an employee. I recognize the cashier, too. I, and it was very awkward, and I just kind of backed away. But uh, he is there all the time, in my defense. Your fucking headphones are on backwards again. Like, it's, uh, it's infuriating me. Tonight is my very last night of homelessness. I've been sleeping at various places, including... Achievement Hunter. Did you actually live at the office for a month? Because I noticed every morning I would show up yeah. and you were the only one who's here hmm. and your hair was disheveled. Yeah. See, I'm on yeah. board with having somebody here. That way it's like if someone breaks in trying yeah. to see. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Marshall's going to kung fu them out of the building? It's like, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to have some like shoes. So we have stolen stuff and a dead employee. <laughs> <laughs> one time at my house, I was in my house at night and I could hear like something chewing in the wall. Like, crunk, 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 crunk. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is that? So I walk over to it and I hear it like cronk, cronk, cronk. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know what to do because it sounds in the wall. So I just start punching the wall. Like, get out of there. <laughs> I had been drinking, right? So I just start punching the wall. <laughs> the noise stopped. So I was like, oh shit, it worked. So like I run outside and I look on my roof and there's like a pipe right there coming out of the roof. And like sitting on top of it is the giant rat. It's just like hunched over. Like I could see it like silhouetted in the moonlight. And I was like, you fucking asshole. And I started picking up rocks and throwing it at it. And I saw it like jump off of the roof and like just start running, hauling ass. And it ran over to my neighbor's yard. And I was like, yeah, that's right, asshole. It's my Your house. neighbors at that time were like, oh God, the alcoholic's outside. They're fit again. God damn it, Carrie. You're wearing your fucking headphones backwards too. I don't... Am I? Yes, I am. What? Every fucking week. <laughs> it's more comfortable the other way. It is. It's true. It's more comfortable. If <laughs> turn those around, it'd be a dream. I want to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. So, right, I want to talk about something. I've got a giant nose. Yep. I fell on it when I was a kid. You <laughs> fell on your nose. I just tripped out the back door onto my nose. <laughs> really?
I like Kevin too. His nose is so big it doesn't even fall on his face. He falls on his nose. It like stopped him. <laughs> and then I end up just like rocking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he tilted into one side, fell and hurt himself again. Is that not embarrassing? You fucking dolt. I am looking at your goddamn headphones again. <laughs> Every week you put them on backwards. I feel like these days, like, Kara's like my little sister. Yeah? Like a yeah. couple of weeks ago, we were building the Mega Block Ford into Don. So we're putting together this giant model, <laughs> and then Kara like, comes running in like a little sister. It's like, what are you guys doing, yeah. man? Oh, what's and this I'm, like, I'm like, no, no, careful. I was like, back off. Everything is laid out very specifically. She's like, guys, I'm not going to ruin it. And then she picks up a box, and then like all these bags of Mega Blocks just start falling out onto the floor. And I was like, what the fuck did I say? And then she just drops it, and then starts laughing, and then runs around, and then runs away. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, get out of my room! <laughs> the first time I saw Lindsay here at the office, I think I had been out of the office, and I came back and I walked in one morning and she was sitting at Jack's computer. I had no idea who the fuck she was. And then it got to the point where it was awkward, so I would just avoid her. Like, if I saw her walking around, I wouldn't get up. And I'd wait till like she cleared the hall, and then I'd go to the bathroom or do whatever I needed to do. I didn't know you had that much power, Lindsay. I would have put you outside my door, so like Gus would have been <laughs> Hello! trapped, and he's like Gus would have just like snuck by. <laughs> I'm like the again. bouncer to Bernie's office. You remember that one time you kicked me out of the office because you didn't know I was the intern? First I'd walked in, I was like, "Hey, Gus," and I'm just getting stuff set up upstairs, and you walk up like hands behind your back, like, "Hey, uh, what's going on, dude?" I was like, oh, yeah, I'm here to meet Brandon and Chris. I got my got stuff going on today. And you're like, that's cool. That's cool. So, yeah, they went out to lunch. Uh, probably won't be back for half an hour, so. But you were like, I'll wait for them. And I was like, no. Yeah, no, no. no. I just left work at GameStop. You were like, stuff. I guess I can go back to GameStop. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, you should do that. <laughs> okay, bye. Have you ever had a full-on lucid dream where you figure out that it's a dream? I no. had it once. I was like walking down the city and all of a sudden it's like I just figured out. I was like, well, I'm not here. This is a dream. And I actually had the ability to just like mess with stuff. I was like walking upside down and like just like jumping like between buildings, mm -hmm. leaping. And I was like smacking people in the face. I was like <laughs> punching cars. I turned into a side guy. <laughs> I woke up more and I was like, wow. <laughs> Like with a bear, you know what to do, right? If you run into a bear. No. You're supposed to go to sleep, or like, not go to sleep. You're supposed to act like you're dead for a bear. <laughs> you're like, oh, there's a bear over there. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I'm gonna take a, a nap. Take a shower. <laughs> wash yeah. your face. The bear's like, holy <laughs> shit, this guy's a badass. He doesn't care at all. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you fall asleep, the bear cuddles up like a teddy bear. Yeah, like, <laughs> and you hug it. God by. damn it! <laughs> what happened? He keeps <laughs> putting his fucking drinks on my copy. <laughs> I'm getting it ready because I have to read it in a minute. Okay, so at least my headphones are on the right way this week. Again. No, they're not! Oh, they are yeah. not on correct! <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually looked. I'm trying to do it right. <laughs> You're so dumb, you fucking idiot. Dan <laughs> is a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he told another story about how he doesn't understand menus. Every interaction between him and a waitress takes forever. He, there's like a ring of confusion where... She's explaining it back to him, but he's not listening. Yeah. He's trying to mix meals. He once tried to order the burrito fajitas or something. He was like trying to mix it all around. <laughs> and, and he's like, no, 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 but do you want this? And he's like, no, 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 idiot, no. Take the onions out of this as well. I don't want that. And then I want this with this. And, and it got to the point where the waiter was just like, I'm sorry, I've just... And he walked off and someone else came. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told another story about how he went to McDonald's and he didn't understand the menus are vertical columns, so he just read straight across. He goes, I want a Big Mac chicken legend Sunday. <laughs> what did he think that was? That's what I, I don't like, know. In his mind, he's like, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> we went out to this restaurant in Mandalay Bay. So we're ordering food there. Dan is trying to order his food. He's like, I want scallops, the appetizer, and we want uh, a steak. Something. There was no scallop appetizer, another dinner. And she's like, so do you want scallops? I think he ends up ordering two dinners. <laughs> two dinners! <laughs> Someone gets like a tiny little petite appetizer. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. He gets a big plate of it. He's big, 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 big pot. <laughs> to be fair to the waitress, she was very cool and patient with him. He's like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, why not? And then Dan went to piss. The waitress came back. And you were like, so he ordered two meals, right? And she was like, yeah, I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> Hey, where was it we were flying when we saw the lady start crying because she requested a gluten-free oh, meal God. and that they didn't get the message? 
And she got in this fight with the flight attendant. He was like, well, can I give you this vegetarian meal? And she's like, I don't want it. I wanted the gluten one that I ordered. And he's like, well, I'm really sorry. She's like, I haven't eaten in 12 hours. And he's like, please take this vegetarian meal. And she's like, no, just take it away. And she's just like sobbing and crying. So he gives the vegetarian meal to somebody else. And then like two minutes later, she's like, okay, I'm hungry. I'll take the vegetarian meal. And he's like, well, we're all out of vegetarian meals. All we have left is this one chicken meal. And she's like, <laughs> he's like, do you want it? And she's like, I don't have a choice. And he goes to give it to her and he dropped it. Oh my God. <laughs> and it was the last fucking meal. Oh my God. And so she was the only person on the plane that didn't get to eat. A couple years ago, when Jason and I were flying to the UK, we uh, had to connect to Chicago. We flew Austin, Chicago, and Chicago to London. And uh, our flight in Chicago was delayed, like every flight there. Except they said it was delayed because there were mechanical issues with the plane. So an hour and a half, and they go, like, okay, we fixed the mechanical problems on the plane. I'm like, finally. So, you know, we get in line to board the plane. And I'm looking out the window at this giant plane we're about to get on. And they fire the engines up. And one of the engines under the left wing like, starts spinning out this huge, billowing black smoke. And I'm like, maybe they didn't fix this problem. <laughs> then we get on the plane, and the pilot comes on going, uh, apparently we're still having some issues with our air conditioning. Air conditioning's not working right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to sit here for a while while our mechanics try to fix it. And I remember I was aiming Bernie, and Bernie replied, <laughs> rotten hell, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die. So, this oh, weekend, okay. we went to PAX East. I, took it, I think I took it to a whole new level. We were out at the bar, and I was just sitting there drinking. So I got to that point where I was like, right at the edge of drunk, and we were going to leave to meet our people for dinner. And I was like, oh, I got a full drink in my hand, and I just slammed it. There you go. That was it. That's the best one. And Ashley's like, oh, shit, I have drunk Bernie here. What have I done? Then we went to go meet the, the Rooster Teeth group at dinner. And uh, so I walked in, and the way Barb described it was, I walked up to our table and went to them. And I go, you're all drunk. And then <laughs> Barbara goes, uh-oh. <laughs> Everyone's there. They've been working so fucking hard. And so I stood up. I held my glass up to everyone at the table. Everybody, like, stops and looks at me. And I go, I am Catbug. <laughs> but the real thing that happened was after that. So Bethesda had a big party. Ashley knew some people there. So she goes, hey, we're going to go to this party, but you're pretty drunk. So I'll just keep an eye on you. We'll be there for just a little bit. Then we'll go. And I said, aces, let's do it. So we go. So we get to the party, and Ashley says, stay here. She goes, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Don't do anything. Don't talk to anybody. Just stay right here. I'll be right back. I'll go to the bathroom with you. She goes, no, 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 no. She goes, just stay here. I'll be right back. So I said, okay. She said she went to the bathroom. She came back, and she said I had bags of popcorn, and that I was going up to people, and I would give them a bag of popcorn. I'd go, hey, here, take this popcorn. You're too drunk. You have to go now. You have to leave. <laughs> you have to leave. And people were leaving. <laughs> Oh my god! I was kicking people out. I had a dude come up to me at our booth the next day, and he goes, "Bernie, I just want to apologize." He goes, "I had a little bit too much to drink oh, shit. at the party, and you kicked me out." He goes, <laughs> he goes, "You gave me a bag of California. You're a, you're a piece of shit." <laughs> I also remember the first time we ever got a check from GameStop when they started selling our DVDs retail, and Jeff lost it. I handed him the check because it was like the biggest check either of us had ever seen in person. Turn around, do a full revolution, go, where's the check? Goes, oh. <laughs> where's the check? Where is it? I mean, we hunted up and down the street looking for that check. We were going yeah. to lunch you to celebrate. You hand him in the street. Hand him in the car. <laughs> and then we get out of the car and I go, I need the check back. Goes, I don't have it. <laughs> My kid does that. Teddy, my youngest, who's the most irresponsible kid on the planet, he takes off his shoes and then he loses them. And then he puts it on you. Like, where are my shoes? Where are my shoes? Like, like I don't know where your damn shoes are. <laughs> They're your shoes. So one time he had one shoe on at the end of a movie and we hunted up and down <laughs> the rows for his other goddamn shoe. And finally we found it. Not down three rows, up three rows. How does that happen? I don't even know. I don't even know. So I put down Ty's shoe. Then we go walking. We walk three steps down. He's crying. And I turn around and go, why? He goes, I lost my shoes. He literally, this is not a joke. We went 40 feet and he didn't have his shoes anymore. He didn't know where they were. <laughs> I used to be funny, if you have to fire somebody, wait until <laughs> April Fool's Day. Because, you know, when you fire somebody, it's always dramatic and they get upset and there could be a lot of throwing and shit like that. So I thought it'd be funny, like, bring him on April Fool's Day and go, hey, it's April 1st, so I just want to let you know, you're fired. Wink. And then, <laughs> and then keep that going. Like, oh, here's your severance, just sign that wink, wink, and everything. And walk him all the way out of the parking lot. Make it all part of the joke until you realize eventually when he's at home that, yeah, he actually did get fired. Fucking Gus threw my goddamn cat out of here. And then what'd you do the week after? Everyone knows, because you won't shut up about it. I brewed some beer. There are literally tiny little flies everywhere. That's not my fault. Yes, it is. You brought beer into the studio. Fight, fight, fight. Kiss, kiss. (laughs) 
I wonder sometimes how much the past stank. Imagine if you time traveled back to the time, like, oh, I'm going to get to see the Declaration of Independence signing. You walk in and you're like, what the fuck, people? <laughs> Take some showers. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it was fucking rank. I want to get this started with oh, a conversation I had with Brandon yesterday. Brandon was talking about how he was hiking one time, and he wasn't worried about getting lost because he had his iPhone. And I said, how does the compass on the iPhone work? I said, if the radio's disabled, you don't get a signal. Does the compass still work? you got to stop saying compass. Yeah, for yeah. real, man. <laughs> compass? How do you say it? Compass. Compass. Okay, does the compass still work? And uh, he said, yeah, it still works. And I, I didn't believe him, so I checked. I enabled airplane mode on my phone, and the, the compass... <laughs> Still work just fine. I was like, that's weird. I, I, you know, I don't know how it works. Brandon said, there must be a magnet in there. And I said, I don't think there's a magnet because it would fuck with the cell phone. So then he goes, well, you know how magnets work anyway, right? Oh, here we go. <laughs> he goes, yo, there's a giant mineral deposit in Canada that uh, attracts all the magnets in the world. And uh, that's why they all point to it. And I go, yep. He goes, yeah, it's, it's right under the South Pole. In Canada is where this uh, mineral deposit is. I go, yep, yep, that's why all magnets point north. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, I had to leave. <laughs> so I, I went down to my office to start typing this down. And then like two seconds later, he came rushing in behind me. He's like, I just want to clarify something. <laughs> he goes, I know that the South Pole's in Antarctica. I'm talking about the magnetic South Pole. That's in Canada. Oh my God. And I go, yeah. <laughs> he just gave me a quizzical look. And I go, Brandon, we're agreeing here. And he goes, okay. And walked out. <laughs> Man, I, I, that guy's a fucking scientist. <laughs> When I first moved into my house, I had a problem where there was a squirrel where every time it saw me, it would throw stuff at me. If I would walk outside and the squirrel was in a tree, he would find, like, branches or, like, nuts or whatever to throw at me, and he would hit me. Then he tried to piss on me once. I was, like, standing in my lawn, and all of a sudden, like, liquid started falling next to me, and I was like, what's that? And I look up, and there's a squirrel, like, pissing down, like, straight right next to me, like, it's the fucking squirrel. You're getting bullied. <laughs> yeah. There's one guy, this one homeless person in town, that's and he's a blind dude. His name is Nathan. And uh, he always acts like he's lost. He's like, where am I? I don't know. Oh, wait, like, I know that. Yeah. 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 No, he did the same thing. Shit. No, I'm going to be honest. I felt really bad about this. One time he ran into me and he gave me that whole spiel. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. But, like, I've, I've run into people like that before. But I slowly started to walk away yeah. mid-sentence <laughs> to see if he was, like, really blind. It's like, yeah. he's like I just kind of, like, slowly tiptoed away. No. And dude, you're like, <laughs> In class, I had to go. I was like, I'm sorry, wow. I just had to go. Wow. It makes you feel any better, Miles. A blind guy uh, tapped me on campus with his cane. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm in your way. But he did not move around me. He proceeded to try and feel for <laughs> what was in front of him, which was me. But I was very scared and I didn't know how to respond. I was like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So I went with, it's okay, it's me. It's me, man. It's me. It's me. It's me. Okay. Barbara always has time to stick in some shitty pun. You're like so quick-witted in the like, worst way. I had a lunch that I bought simply because the title of it was Bowl Appetit. Oh my god. <laughs> the Bowl Appetit puns lasted for three weeks. You would show up my door going, I'm about to eat Bowl Appetit. Oh, it's like, get the fuck out, Bowl Viage. <laughs> I can't stand it. I'm looking forward to Hitman. It's one of my favorites. I hear like... it's going to be a hit, man. Jeez. Yeah, there you go. I okay, finally got around right to watching Argo. It's a fucking good movie. Did it Some may say it's our good. D oh, Jesus. No. That's what my life goal is, to go to Whataburger and eat a burger by myself and say, man, what a burger. Wow. And then just leave. That's your life goal. Another, another life goal wow. of mine is to go to the Nile and stand in it and be like, I'm in denial, and then leave. <laughs> Enron was the fourth largest company in the world when it completely just went under. Wow. How did, How did that happen? That. Something went end wrong. Thank you, Barbara. I don't know. What is illegal to eat? Eagle. <laughs> that, that's funny. That's the exact thing I thought of, too. Are you trying to say eating eagle is not le eagle? Oh. <laughs> wow. When I first started going out with Esther, well, I had this really weird thing happen. So, like, on our third date or so, I was like, I have to tell her about Rooster Teeth. I have to tell her about this stuff. And I was like, listen, you know, I do this stuff on the internet, um, and I'm kind of famous. <laughs> and she's kind like, of a big yeah, deal. right. Get out of here. I'm like, no, no, no. Listen, it's going to happen. Like, someone's going to recognize me. I just don't want you to freak out. I'm telling you right now. She's like, shut up. Get out of here. So then we went to a Starbucks to get some coffee. Literally, we walk in, and the barista's like, oh, my God, you're Gus from Rooster Teeth. She's like, how much did you pay that guy? Like, did you plan this? I was like, no, no, no. This is totally just happening. But seriously, how much did you pay that guy? It was like 100 bucks. <laughs> Dateline, nobody cares. You know, I love Joel. He's one of my favorite people. What? But the only time Joel will ever be happy in his life is when the asteroid has broken the atmosphere and is about to hit the planet, he'll point to go, see, I told you. And then he'll be happy, truly happy for that 10 <laughs> seconds 
before that asteroid hits. Now my purpose for my existence is to be there within 20 feet of Joel. Very last second ago, I remember you saying that. <laughs> I told you not to interrupt me again, Joel. This is what happens when you mess with the king, baby. All hail King Gus. So, like I was saying, I had the Tyrannosaurus Rex in a headlock. It's about to finish him off with suddenly... God damn it, Joel. What now? He said you're not wearing your crown. How do you know? Uh, yeah. He's saying since you don't have your crown on, you're not the true king and you don't have any power over us. Oh, come on. He said like two words. He also said it's time we rise up and revolt. No more oppression! No more oppression! No more oppression! No more oppression! No, wait, 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 hold on. I have the crown. I swear. I, I think I just left it in my office. No more oppression! Okay, an infinite hallway with door. But which one's my office? Mm, okay. Uh. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, sugar. How about a dance? Um, no thanks. Where am I exactly? You're in Dark Chocolate's world now, baby. Have you met the girls? This is Chocolate Chip. And this one is Thunder. Gross, you named them? I'm just gonna go. You look like you've got a satisfied customer already, anyway. <laughs> Please help me! <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Any one of these could be my office. Maybe this one. Hello? Hello? Huh. I always thought it'd be smaller. Hello there. Do you work here? Do you know where I am? Me? It's your brain. What? It is? Man, this is fucked up. I always thought it'd be bigger. Everything is so messed up. What's up, Monty? What the? Access denied. You are not supposed to see this. Yet. Well, that was weird. Alright, I got a good feeling about this one. Where the fuck is my office? Hey look, it's Barbara! Everyone's favorite- Nope! Jeff? Is that you? Of course it's me, buddy! Who else would it be? Kinda hard to tell, to be honest. You ready to go on our double date? Double date? With who? With these two fantastic ladies! Hi, I'm Dom! And I'm Cunt! Whoa, no! Seriously, this is getting ridiculous. I know, man. This grass tastes like shit. I'm never gonna find my office. Gee, complain more. At least you're not tied to this one spot. I don't need a talking goat to put my life in perspective! Just shut the fuck up. Wait, don't go. I can help you. You said you were looking for an office, right? I was just in one. There was a shiny crown that tasted like the worst grass ever. The crown? I need that! Which way's the office? Um, well, I'm not too good with directions. It's a goat thing. But if you emancipate me from this stake, I'll show you the way. Okay. That's better. I'm not used to standing on my feet for so long. Or ever, really. Let's go. Whatever you say, talking magical goat. Okay, this is it. Are you sure about this? Yep. My goat instincts tell me so. Finally, my crown! <gasps> the fulcrum! I should have known it was you. Yes, tis I! The missing piece of the world. And my evil pet, Flatbush the Platypus. Trademark. Give me my crown, Fulcrum. Never! I am the new ruler of the podcast land. You were the one who locked me up. You're a jerk, you know that? I don't care, I'm king now. And that entitles me to be a jerk now. Bow before me, subjects. Bow and be subjected. I'll never bow down to you! So be it! I'll deal with you two myself! Flatbush! Attack! My eyes! 
Prepare to die, fool! <laughs> hey, no fear, not in the face, not in the face. <laughs> what? Go! Help me! Get him off! I'm just a magic talking goat. What can I do? Don't you have any other magic powers? Hmm, let's see. No! Not bad. Whew, we did it! Man, thanks for your help, goat. You're the best. Hey, no problem. I think we both learned today that... Whoa. Behold, I am the pizza god. You have freed me from my imprisonment. As a reward, you may have the hand of my beautiful daughter, Princess Pepperonella. You will marry and rule the land of pizza together, ushering in a new era of peace and happiness. Sweet. <laughs> it's good to be the king. So tasty. Mm. Oh, come here. Yeah. Gus, 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 Gus,